Hello, Marky Dragon, also known as Marcus Eikenberry in real life. And today I'm again out at my lake, my backyard in wonderful Florida. Um, this is where I have just so much wildlife out here. Uh, you know, I see, um, I was kind of hoping they would come around while uh, I'm filming out here, but I actually don't see them out here today. Um, there's all these white birds or egrets, and they come around the whole shoreline and they work with the other ducks. And so the other little, there's these little ducks that'll get in the water and they will kind of scare the fish towards the shore and the egrets will pick them up and eat them. And uh, they kind of work together uh, and they'll go around the whole lake eating all the fish. <laughs> breakfast every morning. So I uh, got uh, just a little bit different topic here. It's about limousines and uh, it's been a very long time since I've done any limousine videos on this channel. Uh, if you guys may not realize it but uh, my Marky Dragon channel here actually began as a limousine documentary and I documented the first year of a limousine service that I owned and it became quite popular and then I tried putting some video game stuff on here and kaboom, here we are. So <clears throat> I used to own a limousine service and uh, I owned, um, it was back in, uh, I don't know, 2000, uh, late 2006 through 2009 and um, I was successful at the beginning and then the economy turned and uh, just totally destroyed us and um, because nobody was willing to pay you know in 2000 uh, late 2007 uh, when they announced we were officially in recession um, that um, people stopped renting really high-end cars and I had the most high-end cars um, I had um, five limousines in total uh, three of them were considered buses because they could hold over 16 passengers and um, and I had a I had an old Lincoln limousine that was five passenger and then we had a nice Chrysler 300 that was brand new that was um, I think uh, six or seven passengers uh, and then I had a uh, Hummer H1 which held 24 people I had uh, a Ford um, Ah, oh, what was that? It's a big one, not excursion. Um, uh, it started with an E, big Ford. Uh, anyway, it, um, it held, uh, I think about 18. And then uh, we had another one that held 22, which was a Hummer H2 uh, with tandem axle in the back and everything. It was, um, <clears throat> I really enjoyed it and I really wish the economy didn't turn because I'd probably still have that business today. But um, I lost an incredible amount of money on that business. Uh, we lost around half a million dollars and, um, you know, learned a lot of lessons uh, in, in that whole time. And so I still get limousine questions from people watching those older videos, uh, people especially who want to start a limousine service. And uh, so I've got a really interesting one here today. And um, it's from... Uh, Oxlandstein on YouTube and uh, it's kind of long but I think it's really good so let's check this out okay so he says uh, he enjoys watching my videos uh, three or four months ago he inherited a fairly large sum of money um, <clears throat> the the limousine industry has always fascinated me uh, and I've been thinking about uh, taking a gamble with the majority of my funds uh, I do not want to cater to just anyone uh, and everyone who's willing to pay for my services. Instead, my strategy would be to sell the service to a select few top shelf individuals uh, between five and eight clients. I decided that if I take this journey, I will be purchasing two identical Rolls Royce Ghosts. Uh, one car will be used as primary transportation and the other will be used as a backup car in the event that both cars are needed at once or if the primary vehicle is being serviced. There will be no form of advertisements on the vehicles, uh, which will provide my clients with an exclusive feel. My clients uh, feel that their chauffeur car uh, theirs alone, and as they're being shuttled to the airport, corporate events, or other destinations that they're choosing. Um, originally, my intentions was to purchase one extended wheelbase Ro base Rolls Royce Phantom. Um, nice car, Phantom. I've driven those before. Um, my grandparents had one. 
or actually, they, no, they had a silver spirit. That's right. So I never could convince them to let me drive it though. Now, granted I was a teenager, but you know, what the hell? <laughs> so the extended wheelbase Phantom is $450,000. Uh, before options, oh my goodness. You know, think of how much more you spend whenever you have um, whenever you have options added to your cars if you've ever bought a brand new car. And so you'd be adding another, I don't know, 30, 40%, maybe even 50% to the car, to the price. Um, that's pretty incredible. Um, <clears throat> and um, so, wow. Can you imagine that? You know, you'd be up to like $600,000 for a car. That's a lot of money. Um, even, uh, you know, wow. Okay, so let me, let me read some more of this. Uh, so he talks about purchasing two ghosts with options to stay in his budget and everything. He must have inherited a significant amount of money. And, um, I mean, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Uh, he says here that... Um, that will be charging $160 per 30 minutes. So it's $320 an hour. Um, <clears throat> it can be, $320 an hour can be made. It depends on what market you're in too. So he would like, uh, you know, my thoughts on this. And um, so, okay, so some lessons that I learned with owning my own limousine service. One is, is that used cars in good shape make just as much money as brand new cars and they cost much much less like at least 50 percent less um and uh the uh the car is not the experience you are the experience the car is a part of it but the experience is really how you treat your customers and my goodness, their AC unit is loud. Holy cow. Isn't that a pain in the ass to listen to that? Hope it's not drowning out the sound for me. Um, so the, the experience is all about you and about what you provide to them. Uh, I learned something. When, when we had our limousine service, uh, we, had, um, we were very graced to have this guy who um, was... Uh, runner-up named runner-up chauffeur of the year um, for the year prior to, to when we hired him and you know that is that is a that is a big thing uh, big deal and he actually treated you like royalty he treated you like there was nobody else that mattered like he was yours and it's like um, <laughs> it's like having a butler and um, have, have any of you watched uh, Dunton Abbey? Uh, that great, um, you know, show. And uh, it's playing on PBS in the United States and BBC uh, in Europe. And it, um, uh, it goes to show the level of service that, you know, people have for you and the attention to detail and how they make you feel very special. And they do everything for you, you know. Um, so the um one of the things that he would do was uh if you were going out to a restaurant uh he would already know what restaurant you're going to and he would already have a contact there he would have called them a couple of days prior and said who is going to be my contact there you know i'm bringing in um, some very special clients and he would uh then say you know set up with them that he would call them a few minutes prior to our arrival and uh, then it would be like our um, you know waiter or waitress would be there to meet us at the door and take us directly to our seat and get drinks right away and stuff you know bypassing the whole step of check-in and 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 all of that other stuff they would already have the table prepared everything and see that's the extra mile that makes the service make them feel like kings uh, or queens and so the car is not so much uh, a part of that the car is transportation that should be luxurious that can be a 10 year old car uh, as long as everything looks immaculate on it and, and it's a really nice um, 
uh, unit, I want to call it. That's what we called the cars. Uh, you know, as long as it's really nice. Um, a Rolls Royce is more of a wedding type uh, transportation. And, you know, the, the whole thing of, you know, taking them to the airport and stuff, you know, you're, uh, you're barking up the wrong tree. You're spending your money in the wrong places. So my advice would be is, if, is, well, one, I think that it's very foolish to go into the limousine service in the climate that we have right now. I don't think that brand new services can uh, get, um, you know, can uh, get a foothold in. And there's so much politics in it too. You know, um, the, the, you hear about uh, different corporate agencies, or not corporate agencies, but government agencies wanting bribes and stuff to grease the wheels, to get access to things or whatnot. And uh, it was incredibly expensive to get access to like the airport, which we never even thought about that. We're like, we'll drop off people at the airport and pick them up. We couldn't do that unless we had a medallion that, um, that allowed us to go to the airport. And that medallion, um, you know, you'd have to pay, they weren't issuing any of them. And so you have to buy them from a third party, someone that had them, and they cost you $10,000 for one of them. And <clears throat> so, you know, it's just the whole politics of everything and, and, and that stuff. So, gosh, I just can't recommend going into the limousine industry. And, but if you're really bound and determined to do it, do it with one car and do it with a used car. And, and you need to go more with the masses, more of what people want to rent rather than what your vision of this is. So give everyone that exclusive experience, um, but do it in a you know, Chrysler limousine or um, you know, uh, I don't know, you know, a Cadillac limousine. Or something like that and don't buy one that's brand new buy one that's three years old so I don't know if you know this or not but like in um, in Las Vegas uh, the cars can only be two or three years old I can't remember the exact number now they granted they get a lot of miles on them because in Vegas it's very controlled and a lot of people rent a lot of limousines but you can get a three-year-old limousine that has a hundred thousand miles on it uh, for a pretty good price uh, because they are forced to get rid of their limos whenever they get to a certain age. And it's just part of the whole bureaucracy of how it's done in Las Vegas. And so, you know, and if, and if you're in Las Vegas, well, you're gonna have to be buying a brand new car, aren't you? Or you're gonna be buying a, a, a you know, a two-year-old car every year or something like that. Uh, not, not a market that I'd wanna get into. Um, also, a piece of advice would be to have customers lined up before you buy your first car. Honestly, have them lined up, have them solid, knowing that they are going to use your services. You know, have a, uh, a contract with the corporation or whatever. Um, you know, the, uh, you know, it's who you know, not what you know. And so just having a fascination with this does not make it that good. I also would recommend some schooling. Uh, if you really want to do this, a couple of things. I would recommend going to a chauffeur school. Going, and it doesn't take a whole long time to do something like that. You know, a couple of weeks uh, of intense training. Uh, and uh, go to a chauffeur school to learn how to be a proper chauffeur. And this isn't about driving. This is about how to do the customer service. And then work for someone else for a while. Uh, work for another uh, limousine service in town so that you learn the business end of it. You know, um, you know, learn how they do things. Pay attention to everything. You don't have to tell them that you want to open a limousine service. You just tell them that you really want to be a chauffeur. You've, got, you've done your training and everything. You want a shot. And, um, you know, then uh, watch what they do. Watch what's successful. Uh, take notes learn from that. Spend a year probably doing that. And take every single job they offer you. 
uh, every single run that they offer you so that you can get the whole gamut of things so that you're doing stuff during the weekdays you're doing weekends so that you have the drunks so that you have the brides so that you have the um, puke cleanup at 3 a.m uh sunday morning you know after your you know bachelor party that you just did <laughs> um god those were the days so uh, that is my advice, um, and invest your money, maybe short term, uh, so that you can get it out whenever you're ready to buy a car. Uh, get that experience in there, especially, you didn't mention about anything about experience. And uh, make sure that you, you are a successful sh chauffeur first, before buying a car. And uh, because if you're not a successful chauffeur, you'll figure that out while working for someone else. Honestly. So... Uh, that is my advice. Uh, I wish you luck. Um, you know, follow up again and uh, let me know, you know, what's happened, whether or not uh, you've had any success. And I'm Marky Dragon. Take care. Well, now that you've made it this far, can I interest you in a few more videos? You know, in the upper left, I get questions from people who are really exploring about who they are, what they should do, and you know the other people around them and uh, in that video I really try and explain how you can just be yourself don't worry about the BS that other people give you just be you and continue forward in the upper right you see all that lightning going off Woo <laughs> you know I am a big fan of hazardous weather and uh, I filmed this while in Mississippi and uh, set the lightning show to music hard rock music so check it out if you want some uh, hmm, just creative stuff that I've done. At the bottom left is The Mailbag. It's a brand new series that I've just started, and uh, it's where I am reading the mail, one by one, that comes into my YouTube account. Uh, I'm not skipping anything, and I'm not leaving anything out, and just saying it as it is, and what comes to my mind, and when we hit one that's really good, the video continues through that one and we talk about that subject and then that segment is over. So I've uh, come across quite a few good things from that and it's been very well received. You should check it out if uh, you want to uh, see what other viewers are saying. And in fact, if you want to send me anything you can, it will get read. So, and then in the lower right, <clears throat> you know, sometimes we have to deal with really shitty people. And, uh, you know, I explain some of my experiences. You know, I was a bus driver. I got assaulted several times on the bus. I uh, owned a computer store and had abusive customers. And in fact, just the other day, I fired a customer because he was an asshole. So, you know, don't put up with that stuff. Just, uh, you know, be, you know, make sure that people are respectful of you and have compassion for those other people. So, anyway, enjoy the music on the way out. Make your selection. I'm Marky Dragon. Take care.